You lay wide awake in bed at 3 a.m. Your dad is snoring in the bedroom next to you, your clock on the wall is ticking, and outside you can hear constant police sirens. You wonder why all of these incredibly annoying noises are happening at the same time. But then you wonder something. What if every single thing that could ever happen in the universe happened at once? Would we see everything or nothing? Would we explode or simply continue living our lives unbothered? Wow, Kyle, I must say that I'm impressed. This is the first ever intellectual question I've heard you ask in your life. It seems like you are actually getting smarter from all of our journeys together. Well, as always, let's not theorize and actually answer that question, and in the process, absolutely blow your mind. You see, to get our question answered, we need to understand the concept of time. Why? Because everything that happens is because of time. Even physics confirms it. Time is a part of the universe, but what is it actually? Well, in your everyday common man physics, time is a way to track change. Like for example, how long a basketball game takes, how far a car moved on the highway, and even how fast it went. But none of that explains what time actually is, just how it acts. Fortunately, some big brains in human history have asked the same question as you, Kyle. But they're actually smart, and they have two main ideas. The first is Albert Einstein, who discovered general relativity, which explains that time is a physical dimension, the fourth dimension. Just like up, down, left, and right in your three dimensions, you can physically move through time. You know, theoretically. Why? Because it's a part of space, and so we call this space-time. But what most people don't realize is that massive objects physically bend space-time, and that bending affects how time is perceived. See that? That's the Earth's impact on space-time. It physically bends time. Which might sound impossible, but now look at the impact of the Sun on time. And now a galaxy. And now a black hole. Yes, basically the heavier the object with mass, the more space-time bends around it. This is why time moves more slowly near a black hole. It is so heavy that it bends space-time in the most extreme way possible, which causes time to slow down. And this is not just a trick. Even GPS satellites around Earth have a slightly different time because the Earth slightly bends it. This means that they have to adjust for that accordingly, otherwise we'd get even more lost on our yearly road trip to Italy. But that was just one idea. The second idea is much different and comes from what we call quantum mechanics. In this idea, time doesn't really exist inside the universe, it's something that's added from the outside like setting a timer before boiling your eggs. The inside of the egg has no idea what time is, I hope, but you need that time on the outside to make sure it's cooked properly so you don't die from salmonella. The egg is what we would call a system, and you'd think every single system in the universe needs time inside of it to exist, including the universe itself. But what happens when time isn't inside the system, but outside of it? This is when things get really weird. Imagine a system like building your favorite LEGO Star Destroyer and having all the pieces included in the box along with the instructions, meaning you can build it successfully. But removing time from inside the universe is like not having the instruction manual for your LEGO Star Destroyer. So you can only huh? guess where a piece most likely should go. The solution to this problem for the universe when time is on the outside? A tool called a wave function, which is a fancy kind of equation that tells us the chances of where something might be or what they might be doing. That's right, it's all probabilities. A windscreen is very likely to go on the front of your Star Destroyer, and a round piece is most likely to go on the engine. And as this wave function changes, we use that to predict what might happen next. That's how quantum mechanics works, you know, just with subatomic particles instead of LEGO pieces. And all of this talk about time is a serious problem, because when you try to combine general relativity with time on the inside, and quantum mechanics with time on the outside, <clears throat> you run into a big old wall. We want to combine these ideas to understand everything about the universe, but they don't agree where to put time, inside or outside. And this is called the problem of time, the largest problem in physics. Yes, Kyle, are you still with me? I know that was a complete mind f but you asked for it, and it was needed to answer our oh-so-important question. And besides, if you had any more questions, you could have just asked me in my Patreon and special free Discord. Honestly, if you like this channel, you can't miss out. Link is in the description to look just like us with your custom profile picture. But now let's get back to our question. What if everything that could ever happen in the universe happened at once? Well, the answer to that question starts with ignoring whether time should be on the inside or outside 
and just removing it altogether. So, to heck with it, it's gone. And thanks to some dudes named Wheeler and DeWitt who created a special equation, we can do that. This is one of the leading quantum gravity theories that are trying to solve the problem of time. And it looks like this. Yes, yes, I know it looks like something you scrubbled in the first grade, but you were stupid and these guys weren't. And it does something absolutely crazy. All you need to know is that it equals zero. What equals zero? Time. These crazy physicists literally removed it from the equations that explain our entire reality. Which means only one thing. If time doesn't exist, everything can now happen at once. So, how would that look? Every star, every planet, every memory you've ever had has already happened. All of it. All at once, no before, no after, no in between. But as I say that, I can see your TikTok brain rot mind not comprehending this, Kyle. So, let me break it down even more simply. Imagine the story of everything in your life was a book, and I took each page and scattered it across the floor. Each page represents something that either will, has, have, or had happened in your life. You could jump from one page to the other, but it would make no sense, because every page is technically happening all at once, right? The only reason you know it to be a story of your life is because you read from start to finish in order. You start at page 1, and you end at, say, page 80. You know, if you were to become 80 years old, that is. I know with your lack of sleep that probably won't happen, Kyle. You should uh, work on that. Anyway, so without time, and your whole life just scattered on the floor with these pages, we could metaphorically jump from whichever page you want to another, and observe your life. Now imagine this idea of your life as a book, but apply to the whole universe, which probably would have a gazillion bajillion pages. Like jumping from when the last star dies to the Big Bang. In a timeless universe, everything would just be frozen. So how does this work, and what about Earth? Well, plate tectonics don't move. There's no lava bubbling up over centuries. There's just one snapshot where the continents are like this, and another snapshot where they're like that. Volcano eruptions never actually happen, they just are, like a painting of the moment. Amazing! Same with evolution. Life didn't climb out of the sea and grow legs. There's just one version of the wave function where fish exist, another where Kyle exists, but both are frozen. One isn't before the other, they just coexist. Same with you. You didn't grow up, you didn't change. There are just different versions of you scattered across a table of probability. One Kyle is crying, one's peeing, one's filing taxes, and one's dying. None of them are after the other. They all are at the same moment. Causality, the idea that A causes B, isn't real in the way that we think. It's not that one event made the next thing happen, it's just that those two events exist next to each other. This completely wrecks our understanding of identity. You're not becoming anyone, you're already all the versions of yourself that could ever exist, just now, all at once. Now, let's take this bigger. Imagine every single possible version of Earth, every coffee shop, every dust particle, every Mexican bullfrog, and every city, country, war, and even empire, all existing at the same time, frozen into the structure of the universe wave function. From an outside perspective, Earth doesn't rotate, it doesn't orbit the sun, and it doesn't spin on its axis. Entropy, the whole arrow of time thing we thought was the reason time had to exist, and why your ice cream melts, turns out it might just be a feature of the wave function, and this would give us the illusion of time. Death, decay, and bad hair days appear to happen, but no one dies in the timeless universe. They just exist in states where death has happened, and somewhere in that universe's wave function, you are already dead. Somewhere else, you were never born, and somewhere else, you became a space YouTuber rinsing unfunny jokes. Honestly, that's the true horror here. Wait, who wrote this script? Ultimately, what does this mean for your life? Well, either everything has already happened that will happen, or nothing ever happens and your brain is gaslighting you with fake memories stitched into these singular moments. Either way, you don't have free will. You're not moving, you're not changing, you're just a slice of quantum mechanics floating in space remembering being someone else. So now you're probably asking, if this theory is true and everything happened at the same time, then why can I not actually jump to when I'm older or younger? Why do I ever remember yesterday and why does stuff even happen? Well, that's a good question and I have something astounding to tell you, Kyle. This is where two chaps named Paige and Wooters come in. These rascals had a wild idea. Maybe time doesn't exist inside the universe like we've been exploring, and it is in fact on the outside. But in order to experience it like we very clearly do, it would have to be a side effect of us being stuck inside the universe, or the system. 
So yes, the universe is still a wave function, and time is still not a rule like with general relativity. But for time to be removed from the universe, and for us to still experience it, we have to imagine all reality is like a paused Netflix show where you can skip to whichever part you want when you're the one with the remote. But if you're a character inside that Netflix show, things would still happen. You would still experience cause and effect. Evolution still works. You still change for the better. Well, maybe not you, Kyle. But other life still adapts and people still experience time. From your perspective inside the show, things are happening. But from the outside, everything is frozen without time. And the scariest thing is that in 2013, some physicists actually tested this on some particles and found that there could be legs to this hypothesis, enough to scare everyone in the room. Well, it scares me if it didn't scare them. But if you think this was deep, Kyle, wait until you find out that there could be 11 dimensions.